Hi, I'm Debbie from Simply Special Crafts. Today I'm really excited to bring you the twist and pop cards using the Little Book of Under the Sea. This is a blank twist and pop card that's been assembled to show you where we're going with this. It looks really complicated and frightening, I know that it does, but it's actually, once you understand how the folds go, they're really pretty easy to make. Let's take a look at one that's been decorated. Really excited about this one. I'll show it to you again when I do the pause for thought card here shortly on the front. What I've done is I have taken my gilding polish and completely covered my white card. I put a piece of um, velveteen paper, a greeting, happy birthday here, and my kitties on the front. And I hope you can catch that on camera. It is absolutely precious. Four of my little kitty toppers on the inside, plus some matching paper. I think it's just probably one of the prettiest cards I've ever done. To close it back up, you simply pinch these closed and it pops right down. And then the cards actually come with a belly band that you can create in a matching color. Either cover them with paper or you can do as I've done and use your gilding polish on them to hold your card closed. These do come with envelopes as well. Let me show you how they're going to look coming out of the package. This is what you're going to get coming out of the package. You get 20 cards per set. They cost about 17, less than $18 for 20 cards. And I'm sure after seeing the examples, you can understand there's actually quite a lot in these, so they're worth the, worth the price. When you get your supplies out, you're going to take one of each of the pages and you're just going to pop these pieces out. Pop out this one, we'll pop out this one. Now these pieces here, these little extras, these are in case you want to use those for sentiment on your belly band. That's why they're supplying these, these four. Otherwise you're not doing anything with them. Here's our other piece. This is actually our card base here. Your finished card will be 4 by 6 and I'm not sure I mentioned these do come with the envelopes. And we'll pop out our belly band. So there's four major pieces that we'll be working with. The belly band, the card base, the actual folding mechanism, and the part that folds out. Now, I wanted an all over color on mine. And so I'm using gilding polish. Are you going to be able to catch me okay from there, honey? Yeah. I'm going to use gilding polish to color my card. You remember when you open the gilding polish, you're just pushing back on that little handle and it'll pop off. It's a messy operation, but a fun one. And we're just going to take our polish. Just getting rid of some crumbs there. And we're going to scoop it towards the side. Get a nice amount of polish on your on your sponge applicator. And then we're just going to streak across our card. That's as easy as that. Look at that nice, even finish that we're getting on our card. So. I like to kind of have my stripes going the same way, so I'm kind of running horizontally. You will see a little bit of striping, not much, nothing serious, but you will see a little bit of striping, so that's kind of nice if things go the same way. You can see where it's kind of gloved up, I just spread it back out. end here. Now I will see the front and back of this piece as it folds. So I'm going to flip mine over and do the back as well. So all of the pieces for the assembly of my cards are going to be purple. You can obviously, you know the gilding polish comes in lots and lots of colors. So choose the color that best matches the color scheme of the, the toppers and any papers that you're using. 
just to kind of get the coordination you want. I mean, the under the sea has a lot of purples and teals and greens, so I thought the purple would be pretty with the one that we're going to make here today. Flip it around. You can see I'm not being delicate with this. This is not a delicate operation. This is kind of a fun, just sweep over it kind of operation. A little bit more paste to touch that side edge there. And I'm going to set this piece aside to dry while we work on some of the others. That's all there is to it. This will dry in just a minute or two. Soft fingerprint there. Make that go away. Okay. Oops. Count back up my supplies here. There we go. All right. First, I think we'll work on our cover. Here's my cover piece that I've already finished with my gilding polish. I'm going to fold it in half. And I think I'll work on the front cover first. I decided that what I wanted on my cover, well, kind of the theme of my card here is going to be this underwater dive that this guy's doing. And when we open the card, you'll see everything that he's seeing under the water. So that's where I'm going with that. I cut myself down one of my toppers out of the Twilight Under the Sea. This has a beautiful collection of just all kinds of fun imagery. I chose one for the theme piece for the outside of my card. And then I cut it down to three and a half by five and a half. Then I cut myself a piece of Mary that's three and three quarters by five and three quarters. Because I wanted it to have a little black edge to really stand out against the purple. Run myself a couple tape lines here. Hold my image steady and in place. That was pretty crooked, wasn't it? I did it again the other way. I guess I need to <laughs> peel my tape. Okay, and I left myself just about an eighth of an inch border here. So I'm going to put my topper on. Now I'm going to attach my topper to my face. So you can see I got just a nice little edge there. If the tape gives you any trouble, tear it from the center. You can pick it either from the edge or from the center, but if it tries to lift on you on the edge, just grab it in the middle and tear it. And I can get my border down. There we go. There's the outside of my card finished. Now let's take a look at what we're going to do for the mechanism inside. This is the piece that confuses everybody. And what we have here is we have a piece that's folded a variety of times. It's got a score line right down the middle. So we're going to fold it on that score line. And I actually want you to do something we don't have to do. And that's flip it the other way and score it both directions. So this way and then this way. What we're doing is kind of breaking up those fibers a little bit and making it easier for it to bend there. Then there's a score line that goes this way, kind of diagonally across. So we're going to fold on that. We're going to bring it back. We're going to fold it the opposite direction. Then find the other diagonal score line and fold on that. Which again is going to make this just a little bit looser and easier to work. One reason I wanted to do that is because I want to fold these lines 
in like this. See what I'm doing? I'm pushing it down here and forcing it underneath, just like that. Do the same thing on the other side, push down. Because we've scored it both directions, it's really easy to push it in. If you have it folded right, you now have something that looks like a little roof on a house. Once you have that, okay, so we're gonna, it's really important to use red liner tape, this super strong tape on this mechanism because it's going to be um, kind of pulled as, as the mechanism opens. I use three strips on the front. I already peeled the side because I kid you not, the most difficult part of making this card will be peeling the tape. <laughs> so I went ahead and did that. Well, oh, it was off camera. Then I decided I wanted even more color inside. So I took a piece of this watercolor paper that we used in the Unicorn Utopia kit and I cut these down to be, I cut two pieces that were three and three quarters by five and three quarters. And I am lining the inside of my card with those. There we go. Okay, and now I'm going to start placing my mechanism in. To put your mechanism in, what you're going to do is we have it folded, so we have our little roof there. Now we're going to bring it just slightly below. This is red liner tape, so when it sticks, it sticks. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're getting it where you want it when you put it down, because it's going to stay there. And I want it to be just ever so slightly below that line. Get right in where you can see it. You see that good, honey? Mm -hmm. Okay, just slightly below that line. And I'm saying below the line, not to the line, simply because we have a lot of bulk there and we want that to have room to move. Now I'm going to pick off my tape. If this takes too long, honey, we'll turn the camera off because this is absolutely the worst part about making this card is peeling back the red liner tape. It helps if you have a little um, pokey tool or your sharp bladed scissors handy to peel this off. We'll take a little break while I get mine out. My honey was kind enough to go and get me my pokey tool so I could get this done sometime today. And by using the very sharp tip of it, I try to poke it in between the, the liner and the tape itself. There we go. I got him. Okay. The tape's sticking up just a bit there on the side, so I'll poke it down. All right. Now, to do the top part is easy. Just close your cover. <laughs> Rub it down good so it sticks in that adhesive. And now we have an we have our our opening. The next thing we're going to do is use that paste we just painted. Little crummies I'm rubbing off here. I'm going to use that piece we just painted, and you're going to fan fold that. Nothing fancy about that. And now. Here is a real key to being successful with these cards. Yes, more red liner tape. Sorry, <laughs> but necessary. I'm going to cut three pieces of red liner tape to go on this bottom edge, three pieces to go on the top edge, and I want to show you where they go. This is important. The placement of these is super important. Start at the seam on your outside piece. And we're going to put them in this lower corner. And next, yes, that means I have to 
take that off. But let's go ahead and get this upper corner ready to go to. I want three more pieces of this tape to be on my upper corner diagonal from that. So I want starting at the seam one, two, three, all in the upper corner. And I'm going to take my pokey tool, my trusty tool, and get in between that tape and the liner. One, Too bad we can't come up with a really good super tape that tears like tear tape does and peels like tear tape. You listening, hunky dory folks? Okay, got my first one. So. I'm going to try and show you exactly where I want this. Let's see if we can get this on camera. See where this diagonal is coming across here? Put it right to the corner of that diagonal and out to the side of the card. I'm going to show it to you from the other side because it actually hangs over. See that? If it's hanging over, you did it right. So right to the corner of that diagonal fold then we're going to come back in, we're going to peel this tape. <laughs> I can't see if I don't lean into the screen. <laughs> Honey's We've grabbing my shoulder, hair. pulling me back out of the camera range. But there we go. Almost done. There we go. So much easier with a pokey tool. Highly recommend that. Okay, I've got my tape. And this time, it's going from this corner right here where you see that little diagonal fold. You see that on camera, honey? Yeah. Okay, right there and along that edge. I'm going to line it up with the edge. And so when I've done that, Yes, I have a piece hanging over. It's supposed to be that way. Because now, what happens is I can push these together and that whole mechanism closes and folds down flat. So let's decorate them. That's the best part. I made, I went through my little book and I wanted to see what kind of images I had that would look good in little two by three squares, which is the size I cut these to. And you can see that in some cases I made two or three off a page, in other cases I only got one. But I got a wide variety of images. These are the four I decided to use. I cut these to two by three. I cut these to three and a quarter by two and a quarter pieces of mirror board. And then I just mounted my little images on the mirror board. And these are the four I decided to use. So now, I'm just going to take my regular tape, no super tape necessary for this job, and I'm going to peel these, and I'm going to position them on my boxes. So I've got my first one. Oh, doesn't that look good with those colors? Oh my gosh, it's going to be pretty. Well, let's see. I think I'll use this one next. Nothing scientific about it, just what you like. And this one. Love the turtles and the dolphins. 
So I wanted this particular card to be a little less mythical and more kind of realistic. So I've got my diver diving down into the ocean and seeing all these wonderful creatures. Now, there are, in fact, a number of wonderful images in your book of merman, mermaids, buried treasure, other kinds of things. But I just wanted some kind of realistic images for purposes of this illustration. I'm pretty much a fan of all sea life, so I thought it would be fun to do that. Place our last one here and then we'll take a look at our finished creation. If you make a few of these at a time, you can actually make this happen pretty quickly by doing all your painting at once, all your trimming at once. Okay, here we go. There's our finished under the sea little book creation. All done with a little book, black mirror, and a twist and pop blank card. I want to show you a couple others again. Let's take a second look at the cat. Honey, would you grab the two butterfly ones over there, please? Uh, he does that. Let's take a look at the kitties. Now this is done with one of the topper sets out of Pause for Thought. A little happy birthday sticker from the Etch, the new Etch stickers by Dazzles. I used a little piece of green velvet. Here's another piece of my polished cardstock that I put behind that green because I just kind of wanted to tie it to my background piece. This paper here is from the Pause to, for Thought paper pack. And then I've got my, my polished card. Let me open it back up. One piece of paper did the outside and both inserts for the insert paper. So if you want to use, you know, I, what I'm trying to illustrate here is you can use all kinds of materials to do this. But this is a terrific way to use up some of those smaller toppers that we all talk about having. And the kitties are just beautiful. People who love cats are some of the world's, excuse me, have the biggest hearts around. Different kitties. And then it says, relax at your birthday with a kitty laying upside down. But I love, love, love this card. I think it's beautiful. And again, to close it, just pinch these. And it'll drop right down. And let's get that third one. Brittany and I were practicing these in preparation to do this video and we wanted to do one just out of regular paper so you can see that this is a technique you can use with whatever you have on hand. In this card, in fact in both Brittany's and mine, we've used the Romantique paper pack from Hot Off the Press. We'll put that on the supplies list so you can see it. And this Dazzle is the Romantique scrapbooking Dazzles. But let's slide off our little belly band and let me make sure everybody sees that. With the little belly band, all I've done is covered it, in this case, in paper. And the one that we just made, I painted it. But then I put down some, I, I think double stick tape's probably a good thing on this band, too. Put a little piece of double stick tape here. I covered my little circular um, extra off of the cardstock sheet that they send with the twist and pop cards. Put myself a little butterfly there. And, that little band matches my card perfectly. I covered the face of my card in gold mirror board. And then I cut my paper slightly smaller to let my border show. And all I did on the front was add this beautiful piece of uh, two sticker sh stickers off the romantic sticker sheet inside. I've taken another piece of my romantic paper. I've cut it slightly smaller than my card so that I have a white edge around. I took this border right off the border sheet from romantic and I took this little flower off of the off the black romantic stickers. There's both black and gold in that particular pack. And then they they have in the romantic pack, they have these little squares. And I cut, I found squares that I thought would cut down nicely to two by three. 
And in my case, they, they were slightly different heights and I kind of wanted them all to be the same height. So I cut a piece of blue paper. All of them are two inches wide, but I made, um, I made the um, little black sheets um, slightly larger. Let's see, this is two and a half by three and a half. So my little pieces here must be two by three. And that blue then filled in the space to make those nice and uniform. But didn't that turn out beautiful? Closing it up's easy. Just pinch it here and it closes right down. Slide my belly band back in place to hold my card steady. Here's Brittany's creation. She used a different piece than I did and then she put her own butterflies on. Every garden grows a little magic. This is right off of the Romantique. And you can never have too many flowers. A verse she chose to put in hers. Once again, she lined it with the blue paper so you have a nice place to write. But aren't those beautiful? Simple. Gorgeous. So, this is what we've been looking at today. The twist and pop cards. You saying just how quickly and easily you can put together a card that is really amazing when it's opened. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy our videos, please follow us on YouTube. That helps to us to um, increase our ratings. We're currently the 80th best card site on YouTube. We'd love to be up in the well, let's shoot initially for the 30s or 40s, then we'll shoot for the 20s, the teens, and number one someday. But um, we'd love to have you following us and working with us. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter, please feel free to do that. If you sign up for the newsletter, I'll send you a notice of any new videos that have been produced, along with a list of all the supplies that we use on the videos. I'm Debbie from Simply Special Crafts, and we'll see you next time.